Hi, everybody. My name is Katrina Stanley, and I'm a Christian. And uh, several years ago, a few years ago, I was uh, the Lord called me into a series of a season of fasting and prayer and praying for people who didn't know the Lord and. I don't know why the Lord chose to do this, but he would wake me up in the middle of the night. And one night I was awakened about two o'clock in the morning and I felt this evil presence in my room. And, and it was as if it was like the story of Job where Satan was confronting Jesus, confronting God about Job and uh, talking to God about Job and... <laughs> testing him and only this was different I wasn't I wasn't being tested I was being shown some things but in in evil presence and in, in instantly in my spirit I I knew that um, he was there he was spreading false doctrine he was preaching false doctrine he was lying uh, to people about distorting God's truth and um, pulling people away from it and so um, I was immediately led to um, the book of 2 Peter in chapter 2, where it talks false doctrine. And I prayed out loud against that. And then all of a sudden it was gone. And I was able to go back to sleep. A few nights later, I was, as I was continuing to pray for people, and, and I would be awakened out of a sleep. But I was not fully awake. And... I knew I was awake because I could hear the crickets chirping, but I wasn't fully awake and I saw a woman and from out from behind her on either side of her um, came a demon and one on one side, one on the other side, and then one out from behind her back, from her, behind her head. And as I was praying and I, and I said, and the Lord said, this is what she's going through. She doesn't know it. But all the troubles and difficulties that she's having is because of, and the blinding and the not knowing and the not understanding truth and is, is because of what these demons are doing to her and how they're orchestrating her life behind the scenes. And so he said, this is what you need to pray. This is how you need to pray for her. And so I continued to pray for her. And, um, and then I would see these little, look like marionette puppets, and they would just taunt and jeering and laughing and poking fun and uh, ridiculing and condemning. And then it would start getting, you know, even more, uh, more cruel. And uh, they'd say, you're nothing. Uh, you've made all these mistakes. You're, you're, uh, <clears throat> too far gone. You're too far gone. And you should just take your life because it's not going to get any better for you because of all these things that you've done. It's kind of like, kind of like in school and, and there's a bully that just keeps picking on you and picking on you and making you feel like you're nothing. When in truth, behind all of that are these little tiny spirits, evil spirits that are taunting and provoking all of these things. And so I began to pray against that. I went back a few nights later. Again, I was awakened. And this time, um, it was much, much more. The Lord uh, took me much deeper into the spirit realm. I was, this was much more real to me than anything I had seen before. I could not just see it and not just hear it, but I could sense it. I could, I had understanding. I could feel it. Um, and, but he would take me into this darkness and it was like, we were just traveling through the darkness and, and the farther we went, the deeper we went, the darker it got. And the darker it got, the more weight I could feel against myself. And the more weight I could feel against myself, I could feel it just sucking the life out of me, just sucking the breath. I couldn't breathe. And then uh, then I saw 
which seem which is people's faces and they were pushing up they were trying to push themselves up out of this darkness and just to breathe they couldn't breathe and they were just trying to catch a breath and they couldn't catch a breath and it was that constant motion a constant struggle and then <laughs> And they couldn't breathe and then I went to then he took me to another place I couldn't find relief and I I saw I saw little pools of fire it was like craters of, uh, of, of fire and then it would I could I could see people I could sense the heat the heat was so hot that it would cause the skin of the people there would just just bubble up and melt but it would never stop. It continued to bubble up and it continued to melt over and over and over. And they're screaming, help me. They're screaming and they could not get relief. And they would scream over and over, help me. It was horrendous. It was a horrendous, never ending cycle of burning. And the screaming was unbearable. And, then I heard high pitched, high pitched screeches. It was worse than if you've ever heard somebody scratch their fingernails across the, a chalkboard. It was a thousand times worse than that. It would just pierce your ears. It would just make your skin crawl. And it was over and over, over. My place smelled, I could see it was like fire and brimstone, literally just a word literally out of scripture it was firing flames of brimstone fire fire never ending never stopping i could feel the 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 fear the terror the torment and i woke up feeling the terror and hearing sounds of explosion and feeling within myself just like just shaking underneath the explosions that you can't stop it never stops whatever your worst fear is it was was it was going over and over the torment over and over your biggest regrets were over and over the tormenting the time never never stopped it never ended and then i was trying to wake up and i woke up and i could see this black evil presence just around me and it started coming towards me just around me and i couldn't figure it out i just knew that it was terrifying and i all i, I could just all i did I, I said jesus i said oh jesus help me and then i saw his shadow psalm 91 shadow and it covered me and I knew I was in his arms because everything else stopped and there was perfect peace. Psalm 91 says, those who dwell, those who dwell, dwells in the shadow, dwells in the shelter of the Most High, will abide in the shadow. I will say, my fortress, my God in whom I trust. Hell is a perpetual, never ending torment. Pain that you cannot get away from. It'll never end. And It would seem almost too easy for some to say, but Jesus said, Though had I come to give you life and give you life more abundantly. John 10:10. 10, 10, Satan comes to steal, kill, and destroy, but Jesus came that we would have life and have life more abundantly. 
And so what seems to be such a difficult, so difficult for so many, and so many people say, I don't have to get saved. Everybody, when they die, they're going to heaven. No, they're not. No, they're not. And then I saw chapter 20, verse 11. And then I saw a great white throne and the one sitting on it. And the earth and the sky fled from his presence, but they found no place to hide. I saw the dead, both great and small, standing before God's throne. And the books were opened, including the book of life and the dead. And the dead are the ones that don't know Jesus. They're not saved. There will come a day where we will all stand before God and we will answer for everything we've done, everything we've said, every thought, everything is written in a book. Unless you repent, everything is written in a book. It is kept up with. And when you repent, then it's wiped clean. As if you never sinned justified by the blood of Jesus shed on the cross of Calvary. As if you'd never sinned before. But those who reject the provision that God has given for salvation reject Jesus. You will stand before God. You will answer, give an atonement. You will have, give an answer. Mark chapter 9 says they will be, they will possess bodies. They will be given bodies. That they can feel pain. But the pain will never cease to exist. It's Mark chapter 9, verse 43 through 48. Go look it up. Go look it up and read it. But there is another book open, and that's the Lamb's book of life. That's in Revelation 21, 27. But those whose names are not written in the book of life are cast into the lake of fire, which amounts to the second death. And that's where you will burn forever and ever and ever. And it will never stop. It'll never stop. Eternity is forever. Longer than probably any of us could ever imagine. But it's real. Heaven is, hell is real. God asks us, God. but God in his great love for us doesn't want to be separated. He doesn't want people to go to hell. He says, choose life. See, God doesn't send anybody to hell because he is love, but he will also judge sin. And in that judgment, Christ is the only, the only perfect sacrifice that God will accept for the atonement of our sins. And we're all sinners in need of a Savior. But God has made it so simple. And he says, if you will confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord, believe in your heart that God raised him from the grave, you will be saved. All who call out in the name of Jesus will be saved. He said, repent from your sins. Just say, Jesus, I know I'm a sinner, and I know I need you. I want you to be Lord of my life. Please forgive me, and you will be saved. It's so simple. Don't make it hard. It's so simple. Don't tell him no, because that no will last for an eternity.